Hi guys, New Legend here with a quick tutorial on how to slice and print collapsible blades. In this tutorial, I will show you my settings for Cura Slicer. If you use a different slicer, you will still be able to benefit from this video, as I try to explain the rationale behind each setting. Use that and apply it to your own slicer. Just note that some slicers may use different terms. Alright, with that out of the way, let's jump into Cura. So once you drop your blade into Cura, you'll have this solid cylinder. Now, if you were to try and slice this, you'll see that you'll be printing a solid blade. That's not actually what we want. So we'll need to change some settings. First off, in Cura, if you go down to this drop down menu, make sure you got all or expert selected. That will open up some settings that we'll need to look at later. All right, so getting into the settings. First of all, we'll need to select our filament and nozzle size. In Cura, if you go up here, there's a drop down menu. You can see you have an option to change your filament and your nozzle size. Now, for filament, the only filament I can recommend for these blades is PETG. These blades need to be strong and flexible, which are both characteristics of PETG. All right, so next, uh, going down to nozzle size here. This is probably the most important setting if you want to print good, strong blades. Right now, you see I have by default selected a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Uh, we're going to drop down and select a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. If you don't have a 0.8 millimeter nozzle to print your blade, stop, turn off your computer, get in your car, drive, go buy a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Let me tell you, you cannot print good strong blades without a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. We're gonna go down here where it says line width and we're gonna change that right now at 0.8 millimeters because we got a 0.8 millimeter nozzle selected, right? But we're gonna change that to a 0.9 millimeter, uh, there we go, sorry, a 0.9 millimeter line width, right? This is the outer perimeter or the wall of your blade. This is how thick your blade is going to be. And this is important. We need 0.9 millimeters uh, to make sure the blade is strong. Uh, anything larger than 0.9 millimeters will just be too thick. The blades will get stuck on each other and your blade won't expand or open up all the way. Anything smaller than 0.9 I found is just not strong enough. All right, so once we set our line width to 0.9, we can close this tab, head on down to spatial modes. Now remember, if you don't see spatial modes, you need to go toggle down this drop menu and select, select expert or all to see that. All right, so in spatial modes, we have a setting called spiralize outer contour. All right, so this is a setting that's gonna allow us to essentially take this solid cylinder and turn it into a hollow blade. All right, so that's the vase mode, but Kira calls it spiralize outer contour. All right, so we click that automatically. You can see uh, it selected smooth spiralized contours. That's fine, you can leave that. All right, so now if we slice this and take a look at our preview, you can see we have a hollow cylinder. All right, but if I take this all the way down to the bottom, you can see, oh, my bottom is closed. You actually don't want that because you need other blades to go in there. All right, so we're gonna go up to top and bottom. And by default, my top and bottom layers are four. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that to zero and zero. Now, if we slice this, yeah, you can see we have our hollow cylinder. All right, so the next setting, material, uh, printing temperature, you'll need to bump that up. Now, PETG prints at a pretty high temperature. I recommend printing at the maximum recommended temperature for your filament, all right? So for me, that's 250, all right? And this is just uh, because you need very strong adhesion between your layers, right? And at hotter temperature, I find uh, gives you better layer adhesion. So I'm gonna bump mine up to 250. My build plate temperature is at 70. That's fine, I'm printing on a glass bed. So 70 is fine. You might want to play around with that depending on what you're printing with. Next, speed. Uh, you can see my speed is at 25 millimeters per second. That's very slow. And that's what, that's what you want. You want to print these blades slowly. 
Now, uh, usually the default setting is 50 millimeters per second. That should be fine. I've printed blades like that when I was in a little bit of a rush. Those blades are all fine. Um, I just like to print them nice and slow just for that extra security. Make sure you give time for your, the layers to adhere to each other and bond. All right, so next we're gonna head down to cooling. Uh, you can see by default, it's 100% fan speed. We don't want that. Uh, I'm gonna drop this down to 20%. Now, the idea is you want to cool the layer quickly enough before the next layer is put on top of it. But you don't wanna cool it so quickly that you sacrifice layer adhesion between the layers. So I found that 20% is just right. Uh, it gives a time to adhere to the layer below and help with layer adhesion. So next is the build plate adhesion. Now this is quite important. Uh, if I go down here, zooming into the bottom here, you can see my cylinder has minimum, almost no contact with the build plate. This is a print failure just waiting to happen. So I suggest let's go there and add a brim. Now by default, you can see my brim line count is nine. If I slice this, yeah, that's plenty, all right? You can make it a little less, you can make it a little more. Uh, it's just important to have a brim to help keep your cylinder or your blade stable as you print. All right, so close that up. All right, so now you're good to go. You can send this to your printer and start printing. So here I've added blade one. You can see this is the, the last blade or the tip. And we actually want this tip to be closed. We don't want uh, this, this part to be open. So to do that, just make sure you go here. All the other settings stay the same. Just go to top and bottom. At bottom layers, just add four or five layers. Now when we click slice, and we go down, you see, yeah, it's gonna add a few layers just to close up that end, right? Before it starts printing the rest of the blade. So make sure you do that. All right, guys, so those are my settings. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.